the inquiry of Badra the magician. Thus have I heard. At one time, the Buddha was in the city of Rajagraha, on the mountain of Jirdha Trikuta, along with the great Sama of Bhikshus, 1250 in all. All were arats well known to the assembly. The Bodhisattva Mahasattvas numbered 5,000, and had all attained great spiritual powers which they freely manifested, they had realized the patience of non-arising, and had attained Dharani. The preceding were named Lion Bodhisattva, Lion Wisdom Bodhisattva, Wondrous Sandalwood Bodhisattva, Tamer Bodhisattva, Great Tamer Bodhisattva, Surpassing Light Bodhisattva, Revealing Light Bodhisattva, Powerful Light Bodhisattva, Adorning Light Bodhisattva, Brilliant Awakening Bodhisattva, Sama Leader Bodhisattva, Sentient Being Tamer Bodhisattva, as well as all the Bodhisattvas of the Worthy Yin. Maitreya Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Dharma Prince Manjusri, and others were at the head. There were also the four great heavenly kings, Sacred Deva named Mindra, Lords of the Soha world, and Great Brahma the Deva King. Encircling them were innumerable Devas, Nagas, Yaksas, Asuras, Gandharvas, Kinras, Maharagas, and so forth. The Tathagata, the Big Avan, had a great name that was universally known throughout the world, the Tathagata, worthy of offerings, perfectly enlightened, perfect in knowledge and conduct, well gone, knower of the world, supreme master, tamer of men, teacher of devas and humans, Buddha, Big Avan. All knowing and all seeing, he had accomplished the ten powers and the four kinds of fearlessness, four unimpeded liberations, the eighteen unique dharmas, great kindness and great compassion, and perfected the five eyes. He could miraculously make pronouncements, teach others, and wield spiritual powers perfectly and completely. He was able to take three thousand great thousand worlds, with their earth, cities, towns, grass, trees, forests, Mount Sumerus, oceans, rivers, and celestial palaces and halls, and place them on the tip of a single hair abiding in empty space, for an eon or more, and just like his mindfulness during this time, they would not falter or move. At this time in the city of Rajagraha, the kings, high ministers, brahmanas, lay disciples, and all the common people, all regarded the Tathagata with great reverence and honor. They arranged many exquisite drinks, food, clothes, and special medicines, all as offerings of respect. In that city, there was a magician named Badra, who was well versed in heterodox theories, skilled in the techniques of mantras, and who was foremost among the magicians. In the land of Megata, with the exception of those who could perceive the truth, and those who had right faith, such as the Apasikas and Apasikas, the others in their foolishness were easily confused by his illusions and believed in them. When the magician heard of the merits and designations of the Tathagata, he thought, now in this city amongst its sentient beings, everyone has a mind of reverence toward me. Sramana Gotama is the only one, who does not yet believe and has not yet been subdued. I will go now to compare with him and test him. If he yields to me, then the people of Megata will certainly respect me even more. Then that magician, due to formerly planted good karma which had matured at that time, through the sovereign power of the Big Avan, went from the city of Rajagraha to Jirdha Trikuta mountain. There he saw the radiance of the Buddha, which surpassed that of a hundred thousand suns. His round face was pleasant like the full moon. His bodily appearance was full and complete like a Nyagrata tree. The appearance of his hair was pure like the light of a money jewel. The appearance of his eyes was deep blue like a blue lotus flower. The crown of his head was such that even the Brahma Devas were unable to see it. With sixty types of pure tones he spoke the Dharma for the multitudes. Although the magician had seen the sovereign power and extraordinary honor of the Tathagata, he still cherished his false pride. Moreover, he thought, I should now test him. If he is the all-knowing one, then he should know my intent. After he had thought this, he then bowed his head at the feet of the Buddha, and said, I wish that tomorrow you will receive my small offering. At that time, the Big Avan observed the magician, as well as the sentient beings of Rajagraha had roots that had matured, and to mature them, he silently accepted the invitation. Then that magician saw that the Big Avan had accepted the invitation, and thought, Now this Gotama does not know my intent. 
He is certainly not one who is all-knowing. He then withdrew, paid his respects, and departed. Venerable Magalhyana was then in the assembly and had seen this. He faced the Buddha and addressed him, saying, This Badra wishes to deceive the Tathagata as well as the Sama of Bhikshus. I respectfully ask that the Bhagavan not accept this invitation. The Buddha told Magalhyana, Do not think this way. Only those with craving, hatred, and delusion are able to be deceived and confused. I have long since severed and extinguished these, and attain realization that dharmas are fundamentally unarisen. Throughout eons, I have peacefully abided in correct practice. Who would be able to deceive me? You should now know that this person does not create true magic. The Tathagata is the one who makes true magic. Why? This is due to the present realization that dharmas are all like illusions. Even if all types of sentient beings could accomplish magical techniques like Badra, they would not match even 100,000th those of the Tathagata. He again spoke to Magalhyana, saying, What do you think? Is that magician able to manifest 3,000 great thousand worlds, causing them to be gloriously adorned? He replied, saying, Certainly not. Magalhyana, you should know that I am able to manifest and adorn as many worlds, as there are sand grains in the Ganges River on the tip of a single hair, and still this does not exhaust the spiritual powers of the Tathagata. Magalhyana, you should know there is a great wind wheel named Crushing, which can destroy the 3,000 worlds. There is also a wind wheel named Vayaramba, which is able to destroy worlds and re-establish There is also a wind wheel named Rousing Motion, which is able to spin and transform worlds. There is also a wind wheel named Peaceful Abiding, which blows to the highest place. There is also a wind wheel named Scattering, which is able to disperse Mount Sumeru, the Black Mountain, and so forth. There is also a wind wheel named Fierce Flames. And at the time of the burning eon, it blows blazing flames upward to the Brahma heavens. There is also a wind wheel named Subsiding, and at the time of the burning eon, it is able to cause the fires of the eon to subside. There is also a wind wheel named Cooling. Able to cause a single cloud to cover 3,000 great thousand worlds. There is also a wind wheel named Universal Downpour, and when the fires burn the eon, it is able to descend upon subdue the fires with a great downpour of rain. There is also a wind wheel named Drying, and when the eon is flooded with water, it is able to cause that water to dry up. If I were to fully explain such wind wheels, even an eon would not be enough. Magalhyana, you should know this. What do you think, is this magician able to peacefully abide in such wind wheels even for a moment? He replied, saying, Certainly not. The Buddha said to Magalhyana, In such wind wheels, the Tathagata is able to walk, stand, sit, or lie down without being moved. Moreover, the Tathagata is able to place such wind wheels into a tiny mustard seed, and the wind wheels would be able to function there, with the mustard seed neither expanding nor contracting, and without one obstructing another. Magalhyana, you should know this. The Tathagata can accomplish magical dharmas limitlessly. At that time, Venerable Maha Magalhyana, as well as their great multitude, heard what the Tathagata had spoken. At that time, they developed an unprecedented mind, and bowed their heads at the feet of the Buddha. In one voice, they said, We have now encountered the great sovereign authority and spiritual powers of the teacher, and received great benefits. If someone is able to hear the Tathagata, the Bhagavan, and his spiritual power, giving rise to belief and understanding, then this person will certainly receive great benefits, and give rise to the mind of Anadara Samyak Sambadi. Then the night before, the magician went to the city of Rajagraha, to the lowest and most filthy place, and transformed it into a place for teaching that was extensive, level and square. The scent of flowers proliferated throughout, and it was covered with a jeweled canopy. There were also eight thousand rows of jewel trees, and below each tree there was a lion throne. Innumerable provisions were all arranged nicely as offerings for the bhikshus. Moreover, 
There were drinks and food of a hundred flavors, along with five hundred servants wearing white clothes decorated with ornaments. After these transformations, the four Deva kings arrived at the assembly place, and spoke to the magician, saying, You have made these transformations of adornments and provisions, as offerings for the Tathagata tomorrow, and from these causes and conditions you will attain great merit. We also wish to help you make offerings to the Tathagata. Would you permit us to create a second place for teaching, by transformation? When the magician heard what had been said, his mind was curious, and he immediately granted the request. Then the four kings immediately manifested innumerable wondrous adornments and furnishings, twice those of the magicians. Then sacred Deva named Mindra, along with thirty thousand Deva Putras, came to the teaching place and spoke to the magician, saying, I also wish to help you to make offerings and adorn the place for the teaching. The magician was startled, but he once again permitted it. Then that Lord of Devas, for the sake of the Tathagata, by transformation created a hall that was similar to the extraordinary palace of Traya Strimsa Heaven. He also by transformation established Parijatas, Kovidaras, and other wondrous heavenly trees such as these, arranged in orderly rows. When the magician saw these things, he cried out in fear and remorse, wishing to take back his transformations. He exhausted all his mantra techniques, but the magical illusions remained just as they had been before. He thought, This is extremely strange. Since long ago, I have been able to use my mind, to hide or manifest illusory transformations. It is only now that I am unable to make them disappear. Certainly it is this way due to the Tathagata. Then sacred Deva named Mindra was aware of the thoughts in his mind, and spoke to the magician, saying, Because you have now done this for the Tathagata, the adorned place for the teaching is unable to disappear. From this you should know that if there is someone, who brings forth even one recollection in his mind for the Tathagata, then this good root will ultimately be a cause for his peri nirvana. After hearing the Lord of Devas speak thusly, his mind was extremely happy. After the night passed, he went to the place of the Tathagata and spoke to the Big Avan, saying, I have now finished the undertaking, so please show your compassion and kindness. At that time, in the morning, the Big Avan put on his robe and picked up his alms bowl. With a great multitude encircling him, he entered the city of Rajagraha, and proceeded to the place of the magician's place for the teaching. In the land of Megata, those of outer paths, such as the Brahmanas and so forth, all wished that the Tathagata would be deceived by the illusions of the magician. Because they wanted to see this, they all came to the assembly. The Bhikshas, Bhikshunas, Apazakas, and Apasikas, happily wished to perceive and hear the Tathagata's spiritual transformations and the lion's roar, also gathered at the assembly. At that time, the Tathagata, through the spiritual power of the Buddha, caused that magician, as well as Lord Sakra, and the four kings, to each perceive the big Avan in their place of adornment. At that time, when the magician had seen this, he abandoned his pride and bowed at the feet of the Buddha. He spoke, saying, Big Avan, I now repent to the Tathagata. Previously I rashly attempted to deceive the Buddha by producing magical transformations of many adorned things. Although I came to regret this, I was unable to make these things disappear. At that time, the Buddha spoke to the magician, saying, All sentient beings as well as the provisions are all illusory transformations. They are like illusory transformations brought about by karma. The bhikshas of the Sama are also illusory transformations. They are like illusory transformations from the Dharma. My body is also illusory, conjured up from wisdom. All world realms of the three thousand great thousand worlds are also illusory, conjured up by the totality of all sentient beings. Worldly existing dharmas are without any that are not illusions, conjured up by the combining of causes and conditions. Now you should give away these illusory provisions of drinks and food one by one. Then that magician, along with the four Deva kings and Sacra Deva named Mindra, along with all their followers, and the magical transformations of servants, then provided the drinks and food, as offerings to the Buddha and to the Sama, until all the people at the assembly were all full. At that time, 
Maha Kasyapa spoke Agatha, saying, Know that the food is illusory, and likewise are the recipients, when these are in equality, then this is called pure giving. Maha Mogaliana said, Know that the seats are illusory, and those who sit upon them also, when these are in equality, then this is called pure giving. Saraputra said, Just like the illusory servants, are the minds of the receivers, when one is able to give thusly, then this is called pure giving. Subhuti said, Not giving for the sake of giving, nor receiving for the sake of receiving, when one is able to give thusly, then this is called pure giving. Ananda said, What is given is like empty space, and the one who receives cannot be grasped, not attached to body and mind, this giving is the most clear and pure. Light Banner Body Sava said, By analogy, just as that magician created magically adorned things, all dharmas are also such as these, yet foolish people are unaware of it. Light Adornment Body Sava said, The seats, as well as the trees are all illusions of the mind, of such illusions and empty space, how can there be a distinction? Lion Body Sava said, The jackal who has never before heard the roaring of a lion will have a mind without fear, barking throughout the forest. But upon hearing the sound of a lion, he will hide and disappear, the magician was also like this before standing before the Tathagata. When he was with those of outer paths, he would praise himself above the Buddha. Although the magician can create things, his techniques of magic are limited. However, the Tathagata's mastery of the techniques of magic are endless, all the Devas and Maras are unable to know its limits. Lion Wisdom Body Sava said, Fully know that the servants, drinks and food, and those who eat, are all magical transformations, this is supreme and virtuous giving. Maitreya Body Sava said, Just as when ghee is added to a fire, it spreads and flares up abundantly, when the big avan is compared to the magician, the magical transformations are also so. Majusri Body Sava said, The multitude of good deeds at this assembly have never before come into being, all dharmas are entirely this way, always similar to what has passed. At that time, because the big avan wished to bring the magician to maturation, produced an elder by transformation, who entered the assembly. He spoke to the magician, saying, Why did you wish to come here? The magician replied, saying, I wish to make offerings of food and drinks to Sramana Gotama. The elder spoke to him, saying, Do not speak that way. The Tathagata is now with the Bhikshas at the palace of Ajata Satru, receiving offerings of food. The spiritual power of the Buddha caused the magician to perceive the Tathagata and the Bhikshas they're eating. He then produced a second elder by transformation, who spoke to the magician, saying, Why are you now here? The magician replied, saying, I came here to make offerings to Sramana Gotama. The elder again said, Do not speak that way. The Tathagata is now with the Bhikshus, begging for food in the streets of the villages where Brahmanas live. Then the spiritual power of the Buddha caused the magician to also perceive the Tathagata and the noble Sama in the village streets, begging for food. He then produced a third elder by transformation, who spoke to the magician, saying, The Tathagata is now at the garden of Jiva, the king of physicians, explaining the wondrous dharma to the four groups. The spiritual power of the Buddha caused the magician to see all such things. Next, sacred deva named Mindra was produced by transformation, and approached the magician and spoke to him, saying, The Buddha is in Treya's trims of heaven, speaking the dharma to the multitude there. At that time, the magician again perceived the Tathagata amongst the multitude of devas, expounding the essentials of the Dharma. At that time, within the forests, flowers, and leaves, and upon all the lion thrones, and in all the streets throughout the city of Rajagraha, and amongst the houses, halls, and palaces, and in various lofty places, the magician saw the auspicious marks of the Tathagata, and saw himself there repenting before the Tathagatas. At that time, the magician perceived only the body of the Buddha, and nothing else was perceived. He then blissfully arose and danced about, and naturally attained the samadhi of mindfulness of the Buddha. From this samadhi, he arose and joined his palms together, and facing the Buddha, spoke Agatha, I was always thinking. Within Jambradvipa, 
my illusory transformations are supreme? Now compared with the Buddha's spiritual powers, they are not even a fraction by comparison. From this I can correctly and fully know the inconceivable powers of the Buddha. In accordance with the mind he can manifest transformation Buddhas like the Ganges Sands. All of these various Tathagatas perceived are each furnished with auspicious marks. May the big Avan now demonstrate for me which one of these is the true Buddha. To these various Tathagatas I wish to cultivate and make offerings, wishing respectfully to be taught how one can reach the supreme fruit. If there are those who regard the Buddha, without giving rise to a mind of reverence, then these ordinary worldly people are turning away from peace and happiness. Now before the big Avan, I disclose my previous offenses, my deceitful testing of the Tathagata, which I wish to extinguish without remainder. Brahma, Sakra, and their great assembly, I wish that they will testify that I, in order to cross over sentient beings, am now developing the mind of body, and with the light of wisdom, will awaken those in the world, give the sweet nectar of the Dharma, and fill the entire world with it. If someone, regarding the Buddha, perceives such spiritual transformations, and hears such wonderful speech, the supreme practice of unimpeded wisdom, how could one be intelligent and wise and yet not develop the mind of body? Please reveal for us the path to body, as well as all the practices of purity. What is this cultivation practice, that those of the two vehicles cannot enter? What is the foundation of practice for giving reverence and making offerings? How can one possess majestic deportment, and be apart from all doubts and regrets? How can one, regarding many teachings, endlessly cultivate them with strength? How can one speak to the people causing delight in the correct dharma? without consideration for profit, and gratefully returning compassion? How can one, to sentient beings, always be a permanent friend? How can one draw near to virtuous friends, and separate oneself from evil friends? How can one meet the Buddhas and make offerings without tiring? How can one, for one's training and study, have reverence and purity? How can one, regarding the various amadas, achieve their essential principles? as well as abandon contrary principles, and perfect correct thought. How can one be without timidity and weakness, and not be overtaken by Mara, considering meaning and principles, and not abandoning sentient beings? What is it that should not be abandoned, and should be embraced without attachment, to attain entry into correct practice, and perfect virtuous skillful means? How can one cultivate compassion and accomplish spiritual powers, realization of unimpeded eloquence, and even the attainment of Dharani. How can one attain Dharma patience and eloquence, that is clear and pure, abandoning the Dharmas to be abandoned, attaining entry into the extremely profound? How can one, regarding one's vows, bring every single one to completion, and regarding the paramitas, advance to attain non-retrogression? Regarding Dharmas such as these I wish to diligently cultivate, and wish from great compassion and respect, that you would fully explain it to me. At that time, the big Avan responded in a gatha, if one has been aware, that all dharmas are all similar to illusory transformations, then this person is able to then manifest hundreds of myriads of Buddha bodies, and go off to myriads of lands in order to liberate sentient beings. By way of analogy, just as Badra from formlessness manifests myriad forms, these are neither created nor destroyed, without abiding, and without coming and going. The big Avan's transformation body, as well as the Sama of Bhikshas are also without birth and death, and it is even so for Nirvana, these are all the Tathagata's inconceivable spiritual transformations. This is like one who creates an illusion manifesting elephants, horses, and soldiers to perplex and baffle sentient beings, who mistakenly view these as real. Just as the elephants, horses, and soldiers are without nature and without arising, the Buddha's appearance without form is without coming and without going. Abiding in the self-perception of a person is giving rise to a deluded thought of the Buddha. One should not do so from an appearance of form, or from nature, caste, or birthplace, or even from the sound of his Brahma voice, if one wishes to observe the Tathagata. It is even difficult from mental discriminations, to draw divisions between the various Buddhas and the bodies of the nature of the Buddha Dharmas which surpasses the three phases of time. This self-nature is apart from all characteristics, 
not falling into categories of dharmas to be reckoned, this which manifests the various tathagatas, the arising of the self-nature is without arising. It is also without skandhas, entrances, or elements, abiding without anything as its basis. As such, the Buddha's Dharmakaya is unable to be perceived by the five eyes. If one says that, I perceive the Buddha, there actually cannot be this perception, it is from perception without perception, as empty as the trace of a bird's flight. As such, the Buddha, that you perceive, as well as others you have not yet perceived are in equality, like empty space, and of one appearance, without difference. In Saiva, Samadhi, Prajna, liberation, and the knowledge and vision of liberation, all of these various Tathagata's merits are without difference. All abide in the empty nature, unattached to dharmas, as all illusory transformations are without nature and without arising. By making offerings to one Tathagata, the offerings are to many Buddhas, since the Dharmakaya of the Buddhas is an equality and without division. Thusly, since all of the Buddhas together give rise to fortune and benefit, Universally giving to the Tathagata certainly yields a great fruit. Due to their same and equal realization of the clear and pure nature of dharmas, those various Tathagatas are without a proliferation of differences. As for your previous question, which of these is the true Buddha? You should abandon your mental confusions, and listen carefully to my explanation. Abide in the wisdom of correct mindfulness and carefully observe dharmas, all of these are unarisen yet they are falsely viewed as real. If an appearance of form arises, then it should also cease, therefore, the Tathagatas are ultimately unarisen. They are also not self or arisen, otherwise they would scatter in extinction, hence observation of the Tathagata is from perception without perception. Just as your perception of the Buddha is not, in according to any direction or place, all ordinary people have perceptions always from the five skandhas. You should. Regarding these skandhas, observe them as you have the Buddha, the Buddhas as well as the Dharmas, and even the sentient beings. From the appearance without appearance, without having anything that you dwell in, if you establish this careful observation, you will quickly have realization of body. Dharmas are all without existence and thereby false discriminations arise, the nature of causes and conditions is empty, because they are apart from a fixed nature. From this you are able to fully know the pure dharma apart from defilements. And by means of the pure dharma I attain perception of the Tathagatas. When the magician heard these words, he attained the patience of compliance with the dharma. Five thousand sentient beings developed the mind of Anadara Samyak Sambhadi, and two hundred body sattvas accomplished the patience of non-arising. At that time, after the big Avan had finished his food, the magician, out of desire to give, then spoke a gatha, if one is able to regard the gift, the giver, and the receiver as equal and without division, then this giving is perfect and complete. At that time, Anand addressed the Buddha, saying, Big Avan, we wish that the Tathagata, by means of the spiritual power of the Buddha, would assist the magician, so these various offerings and adornments would not disappear for seven days. At this time, the Tathagata, in accordance with the request of the Sama, caused that magician's illusory transformation of the body Manda, to be gloriously adorned as before, for a full seven days. At that time, the Tathagata, along with the Bhikshas and great body Sattvas, as well as the Devas, Nagyas, Yaksas, Gandharvas, and so forth surrounding him, returned to Grda Trikota mountain to speak the Dharma. At that time, the magician again went to the Buddha, and then bowed his head at the feet of the Buddha. He circumambulated the Buddha clockwise three full times, and moved back to one side. He then addressed the Buddha, saying, Big Avan, I wish that you would expound the path of the Bodhisattvas, so that those who diligently cultivate it will quickly be able to arrive at the body Manda. The Buddha said, Listen carefully and well mindfully, because I will tell you. The magician replied, Just so, Big Avan, we are joyfully wishing to hear it. The Buddha said, Good man, there are four types of dharmas of this bodhisattva path. If one is able to cultivate them, then they will quickly arrive at the body manda. What are these four? One the first is to never fall back from the body mind, or lose it. 
2. The second is to never abandon sentient beings. 3. The third is to seek all good roots insatiably. 4. The fourth is to protect and maintain the correct dharma with great zeal. Good man, a bodhisattva also has four dharmas of thoroughly pure practice. What are these four? 1. The first is to maintain purity of the precepts. 2. The second is to maintain purity of mental joy. 3. The third is to maintain purity of wisdom. 4. The fourth is to maintain purity when subject to arising. There are also four dharmas which only the bodhisattvas practice, and that those of the two vehicles are unable to enter into. What are these four? 1. The first is to cultivate dhyana without following arising conditions. 2. The second is for one's mind to be able to discern extremely profound meanings. 3. The third is to be able to give rise to the mind of great compassion for sentient beings. 4. The fourth is to be able to eloquently expound the Dharma in a proliferation of different ways without impediment. There are also four Dharmas for the station of practice. What are these four? 1. The first is happily abiding in peaceful quietude. 2. The second is to detest troubles and disputes. 3. The third is to arise a mind of great compassion for sentient beings. 4. The fourth is to engage in various practices without the existence of coming and going. There are also four dharmas for respectfully making offerings. What are these four? 1. The first is not cherishing one's own body and life. 2. The second is having a mind of constant joy. 3. The third is abandoning pride and arrogance. 4. The fourth is cultivating correctly as one has been taught. There are also four dharmas for perfect deportment. What are these four? 1. The first is awareness of timing. 2. The second is awareness of the location. 3. The third is being calm and quiet. 4. The fourth is being in accordance with the truth. There are also four dharmas for being able to cast off doubts and regrets. What are these four? 1. The first is to protect oneself from evil deeds and matters. 2. The second is to delight in and draw close to wise people. 3. The third is to carefully consider the meaning of what one has heard. For the fourth is to have a mind of compassion, not enumerating the faults of others. There are also four dharmas for learning much without fatigue. What are these four? One the first is to cause oneself and others, to grow in the right wisdom. Two the second is to cause oneself, to be able to sever others' doubts and confusions. Three the third is to cause oneself, to be able to concentrate on receiving the correct Buddha dharma. For the fourth is to cause oneself to endlessly praise the Tathagatas. There are also four dharmas for one's learning to be solid and firm. What are these four? One the first is that having heard the correct dharma, one is able to fully understand it. Two the second is that having heard the correct dharma, one does not do various evil deeds. Three the third is that having heard the correct dharma, one reveals it to others. Four the fourth is that having heard the correct dharma, one transfers it over to body. There are also four dharmas of benefit for those who speak the dharma. What are these four? One the first is always receiving fragrant drinks and food from others. Two the second is always receiving clothing and various offerings from others. Three the third is weakening the influence of the followers of Mara. Four the fourth is that the heavenly protectors will prevail and Mara will not gain advantage. There are also four dharmas which cause others to believe and delight in the Dharma when it is spoken. What are these four? One one is to cause oneself to have a mind with few desires. Two the second is to cause oneself to always know what is necessary and sufficient. Three the third is to cause oneself to speak gently. Four the fourth is to cause oneself to be in accordance with the Dharma. There are also four Dharmas for expounding the correct Dharma without craving. What are these four? One the first is that regarding existence within birth and death, as something to be feared. Two the second is not seeking worldly gains and close friends. Three the third is always nurturing and protecting sentient beings. Four the fourth is being able to cultivate the seeds of wisdom. There are also four dharmas for knowing kindness and repaying kindness. What are these four? One the first is to cause sentient beings, to be nurtured along to the path of body. 2. The second is to cause one, to be aware of the task without losing it. 3. The third is to have kindness and affection for sentient beings, as though they were oneself. 
for the fourth is to cause oneself to cultivate well the deeds of a bodhisattva. There are also four dharmas for always being a friend to sentient beings. What are these four? One the first is to cause oneself to be able to wear the great armor of forbearance. Two the second is to cause oneself to benefit sentient beings without seeking reward. Three the third is to cause oneself to not step back from the mind of great compassion. Four the fourth is to cause oneself to not abandon others even in the face of suffering and harm. There are also four dharmas regarding virtuous friends to draw near to. What are these four? One the first is accomplishing skillful means. Two the second is accomplishing the highest intention. Three the third is accomplishing the correct practices of a bodhisattva. Four the fourth is accomplishing the praises of body. There are also four dharmas regarding bad friends to be avoided. What are these four? One the first is speaking the praises of the two vehicles. Two the second is causing others to retreat from body. Three the third is the accumulation of evil dharmas. Four the fourth is destruction and injury of various good things. There are also four dharmas for being able to meet the Buddhas. What are these four? One the first is to cause oneself to single-mindedly concentrate on mindfulness of the Buddha. Two the second is to cause oneself to praise and acclaim the merits of the Tathagata. Three the third is to cause oneself to maintain complete purity of conduct. Four the fourth is to cause oneself to develop great vows with the highest intention. There are also four dharmas of making offerings to the Buddhas without a mind of laziness or fatigue. What are these four? One the first is taking delight in making offerings to the supreme field of merit. Two the second is that as one makes offerings this way, all sentient beings also make offerings. Three the third is that making offerings this way causes the mind of body to attain firmness and strength. For the fourth is that observing the 32 marks of the Tathagata causes one's good roots to grow. There are also four dharmas for giving rise to a mind of respect, while at the stages of study. What are these four? One the first is rising above the evil paths. Two the second is giving rise to a good destiny. Three the third is honoring the Tathagata. For the fourth is the fulfillment of aspirations. There are also four dharmas for those who are at the stages of study. What are these four? One the first is never abandoning the mind of body. Two the second is having a mind of equality for sentient beings. Three the third is diligently cultivating the paramitas. Four the fourth is hearing innumerable dharmas, without giving rise to fear and terror. There are also four dharmas for purity at the stages of study. What are these four? One the first is not doing evil deeds. Two the second is a having a profound understanding of the nature of emptiness. Three the third is not slandering the Buddhas. Four the fourth is the extinction and destruction of various views. There are also four dharmas for the nature of samadhi. What are these four? One the first is to cause oneself to be separated from troubles and disputes. Two the second is to cause oneself to delight in calmness and quietude. Three the third is to cause oneself to have a mind that is unconfused. Four the fourth is to cause oneself to increase in good roots. There are also four dharmas of mental principles that should be accomplished. What are these four? One the first is cultivating the good dharma and turning toward the destination of body. Two the second is the mind always being peaceful and silent without attachments. 3. The fourth is always striving to cultivate gateways to liberation. 4. The fourth is no longer seeking realization of nirvana at the level of the two vehicles. There are also four dharmas of mental principles that should be abandoned. What are these four? 1. The first is the fear and terror of birth and death. 2. The second is not having confidence in cultivation. 3. The third is not seeking the supreme understanding of the underlying teachings. For the fourth is not cultivating the various good roots. There are also four dharmas of correct thought that one should study well. What are these four? One the first is that a bodhisattva should suffer birth and death for innumerable eons, even if only for one sentient being. Two the second is that one should anticipate the differences in faculties and natures of sentient beings, and speak the dharma causing them to abandon their sufferings. 
3. The third is that one should sever all evil deeds, cultivate all good deeds, subdue the armies of Mara, and have realization of Anadara Samyak Sambadi. 4. The fourth is that one should, with a single Brahma voice, expound the essentials of the Dharma for innumerable sentient beings of the 3,000 great thousand worlds. There are also four Dharmas for having a mind that is fearless, that Mara is unable to destroy. What are these four? One the first is to observe that all dharmas are similar to illusory transformations. Two the second is to always associate with the truth and with correct wisdom. Three the third is being without discrimination regarding all dharmas. Four the fourth is being without attachment regarding all appearances. There are also four dharmas for considering meaning. What are these four? One the first is knowing that all dharmas arise from causes and conditions. Two the second is knowing that there are no dharmas, which may be designated as arisen. Three the third is knowing that dharmas, arising from conditions, are themselves unarisen. Four the fourth is knowing that dharmas are unarisen and also not extinguished. There are also four dharmas for not abandoning sentient beings. What are these four? One the first is not abandoning great vows. Two the second is enduring weariness and suffering. 3. The third is not begrudging one's own body and life. 4. The fourth is always cultivating the four methods of winning over others. There are also four dharmas, which should not be abandoned. What are these four? 1. The first is that one should not abandon giving offerings. 2. The second is that one should not abandon the development of sentient beings. 3. The third is that one should not abandon careful observations. For the fourth is that one should not abandon increasing the goodness of others. There are also four dharmas, which should always be retained. What are these four? One the first is that even the smallest good roots should be cultivated. Two the second is increasing the goodness of the minds of others without become tired. Three the third is that after hearing of giving and of morality, one is able to believe and accept it. For the fourth is not seeking any type of benefit or fame. There are also four dharmas for entering into correct practice. What are these four? One the first is the accomplishment of penetrating wisdom. Two the second is abiding in great samadhi. Three the third is cultivating the nature of emptiness. Four the fourth is being without attachments. There are also four dharmas of skillful means. What are these four? One the first is that of all types of mental development, a bodhisattva regards the mind of body as the foremost, so even afflictions cause one to follow the path to supreme body, much less initiating various good mental qualities. Two the second is observing sentient beings, even those who abide in wrong views, as all vessels for the Dharma. Three the third is full knowledge, that Dharmas are without self-nature. For the fourth is the cultivation of the samadhi gateways of liberation without attachment to thoughts. There are also four dharmas for cultivating a mind of great kindness. What are these four? One the first is cultivating a mind of great kindness, by saving and protecting sentient beings. Two the second is cultivating a mind of great kindness by liberating sentient beings. Three the third is developing a mind of great kindness by awakening sentient beings. For the fourth is cultivating a mind of great kindness, by causing sentient beings to enter nirvana. There are also four dharmas for cultivating a mind of great compassion. What are these four? One the first is to cause oneself, to cultivate a mind of great compassion, for causing sentient beings to leave evil paths, and abide in good destinies. Two the second is to cause oneself, to cultivate a mind of great compassion, for causing sentient beings to abandon evil practices and to practice good dharmas. 3. The third is to cause oneself, to cultivate a mind of great compassion, for causing sentient beings to depart from the lesser vehicle, and enter their great vehicle. 4. The fourth is to cause oneself, to cultivate a mind of great compassion, for causing sentient beings to depart from birth and death, and to attain nirvana. There are also four dharmas for accomplishing supernormal powers. What are these four? One the first is to not begrudge one's own body and life, and be without love and fondness for it. Two the second is to cause oneself to fully know that all dharmas are like illusory transformations. Three the third is to cause oneself to give rise, to respect for sentient beings. 
for the fourth is to cause oneself to cultivate samatha without mental scattering or confusion. There are also four dharmas for attaining unimpeded eloquence. What are these four? One the first is following the meaning rather than the letter. Two the second is being in accordance with the dharma rather than being in accordance with others. Three the third is to thoroughly understand that dharmas are apart from words. For the fourth is that from full knowledge, words may be spoken endlessly. There are also four dharmas for attaining durani. What are these four? One the first is that when learning much, one does not become weary of it. Two the second is that one respectfully makes offerings to those who are well learned. Three the third is that from a proliferation of names, one speaks the true meaning. Four the fourth is that one is able to enter the correct path according to the underlying meaning. There are also four dharmas for being able to attain dharma patience. What are these four? One the first is thoroughly cultivating the supreme understanding. Two the second is transforming without retrogression. Three the third is provisions being full and complete. Four the fourth is to endeavor without becoming weary. There are also four dharmas for attaining pure rhetorical abilities. What are these four? One the first is to not oppose those who speak the dharma. Two the second is to revere the dharma teachers and respectfully listen and accept it. Three the third is to not become proud and arrogant from having learned much. Four the fourth is to not give rise to contempt for those who have learned little. There are also four dharmas which should be abandoned. What are these four? One the first is that one should abandon craving, hatred, and delusion. Two the second is that one should abandon the sravaka vehicle. Three the third is that one should abandon the pratika buddha vehicle. Four the fourth is that one should abandon the appearances of good dharmas. There are also four dharmas for entering into extremely profound meanings. What are these four? One the first is to profoundly penetrate the dependent arising of conditioned dharmas. Two the second is being able to correctly and fully know the underlying meaning. Three the third is giving rise to a profound and correct understanding of the nature of dharmas. Four the fourth is thoroughly penetrating the meaning of the emptiness of all dharmas. There are also four dharmas for causing one's aspirations to become fulfilled. What are these four? One the first is that sila should be clear and pure. Two the second is removing evil karma through purity. Three the third is not engaging in flattery or deceit. Four the fourth is increasing one's good roots. There are also four dharmas of the paramitas and advancing to non-retrogression. What are these four? One the first is that through skillful means of one paramita, one is able to completely penetrate all paramitas. Two the second is that through skillful means of fully knowing one sentient being, one is able to fully know all sentient beings. Three the third is that through skillful means of the realization that one dharma is pure, one is able to fully realize that all dharmas are pure. Four the fourth is that through the skillful means of fully knowing one Buddha, one is able to fully know all Buddhas. For what reason? This is because the nature of dharmas is without distinction. After the Buddha had thusly spoken of the fourfold dharma gates of a bodhisattva, the magician Badra had realization of the patience of non-arising, and leapt with joy. He then ascended from the ground into the sky to the height of seven palm trees. At that time, the big Avan smiled a bright and peaceful smile, and from his forehead released the immeasurable light. This light universally illuminated the Buddha realms, and then entered back into the crown of the Tathagata. At that time, Venerable Ananda thought, The Tathagata, worthy and perfectly enlightened, has not smiled this way without a cause? He then arose from a seat, bared his right shoulder, and knelt with his knee to the ground. Joining his palms together, he faced the Buddha, and spoke Agatha to question him, universally heard in the Triple Realm, everywhere known and honored in the station of authority and wisdom inconceivable, having already reached the other shore of body and merits, for what reason do you now manifest this smile? The ten directions and five destinies of sentient beings, the mental motions and natures of high, middle, and low the Tathagata in all these cases is able to know these. Now why do you manifest this smile, and for what reason? Among the humans, devas, and eight divisions in the great assembly there are, those who are able to produce wonderful sounds, 
but when compared to the pure voice of the Tatha Gita, they are not even a tiny fraction by compare. The radiance of the Big Avan goes through the ten directions universally illuminating innumerable Buddha lands. The light of the sun and moon, of money jewels and Brahma Devas, is enabled to compare with that of the Tatha Gita. Completely knowing the extremely profound Dharma of emptiness, without self, without a person, as well as sentient beings, having fully abandoned the two extremes of emptiness and existence, well knowing the three times are like the moon's reflection on water. Now, he whose destiny is within the supreme vehicle, who transmits the lineage of the Tathagata's Dharma, and who arises within the vast and great triple gem, we wish you would explain the reason for this smile. The Tathagata's manifestation of light from a smile has a difference for those of the different vehicles. If it enters back into the knee or into the shoulder, then this is for a person, who is of the two vehicles. Now this one releases immeasurable light and this light enters into the crown of the Tathagata. Supreme One among Devas, for what person in this Buddha vehicle will you give assurance to? At that time, the big Avan spoke to Ananda, saying, Do you now see this Bhadra? He replied saying, I have seen him. The Buddha told Ananda, This good man, after 92,000 eons, in the land of great adornment, during the eon of skillful transformations, will attain Buddhahood. He will be named Spiritual Transformation King Tathagata, worthy and perfectly enlightened. In the Buddha land, the common people will flourish in peaceful tranquility and rich comfort. The earth will be flat and as soft as can. The flowering trees and fruit trees will be arranged evenly in rows. It will be adorned with hanging banners and precious canopies. A multitude of wondrous sounds and wonderful fragrances will spontaneously permeate everywhere. If drinks or food are necessary, then they will arrive with a single thought. All the provisions received and furnishings arisen there will be like those of Treya's trim so heaven and no different. In that land there will always be a proliferation of adornments manifest, and therefore its name is the land of great adornment. In that land, all the common people will abide in the great vehicle with deep and solid faith. That spiritual transformation Tathagata will have a lifespan of 10,000 years, and the correct Dharma will abide in the world for 10 billion years. Before the time of his nirvana, he will give renowned body Sava the prediction of Anadara Samyak Sambadi, saying, In the next era, you will attain Buddhahood, named all-surpassing Tathagata, worthy and perfectly enlightened. When Badra heard the Tathagata's prediction, he descended from the sky, and bowed his head at the feet of the Buddha. He then said, I now take refuge in the Tathagata, worthy and perfectly enlightened, as well as the Dharma and the Bhikshas. Thusly, he sought to repeat this innumerable myriads of times. He then continued, saying, The Buddha, the Big Avan, from undifferentiated true suchness, speaks of all dharmas as undifferentiated from true suchness, even without differences, without shortcomings, without divisions, unarisen and uncreated. I now also take refuge in this. At that time, Venerable Ananda spoke to Badra, saying, If your refuge is in the Buddha's teaching of true suchness, what in the nature of the Buddha Dharma may be obtained by you? The magician replied, saying, I myself am of the nature of the Tathagata's Dharma. Why is this so? The Tathagata and I are without duality and without division. Because all dharmas are true suchness, they are deemed true suchness, and all dharmas are without a different nature. All sentient beings are also such as this. The Venerable should know, that what is without duality is without discrimination, and this is non-duality. For what reason? This is because the wisdom of the Buddha is fully knowing that dharmas are mere names. Venerable Ananda, before the Buddha, said, Amazing, Big Avan. This Badra even has such wisdom and eloquence. Before, he always baffled the world with his illusory transformations, and now he is baffling the world with his wisdom. The Buddha spoke to Badra, saying, Virtuous man, are you really doing so? Badra replied, as the Buddha establishes those matters which baffle the world, I also baffle the world. Why is this so? This is because the Buddha, the Big Avin, from being without self, 
speaks of the existence of sentient beings and life, causing the world to be baffled. In the Tathagata's realization of body, there is no perception of even the slightest dharmas of birth and death, and yet he speaks of birth and death. As I understand it, only the Tathagata greatly baffles the world? The Buddha said. Excellent, excellent, good man. It is just as you have spoken. The Buddhas, the Tathagatas, from being without self and even apart from all birth and death, according to worldly conventions speak of sentient beings and so forth. There is also not even the slightest dharma, which may be called nirvana, and from this realization of the attainment of nirvana, they speak of nirvana? When Badra heard this spoken, he addressed the Buddha, saying, I wish to leave the home life and become a bhikshu. At that time, the Bhagavan spoke to Maitreya Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, You should shave the hair and beard of this good man, and give him the complete precepts. In accordance with the Buddha's instructions, Maitreya Bodhisattva allowed Bhagavan to leave the home life, and receive the complete precepts. After leaving the home life, Badra again addressed the Buddha, saying, Big Avin, this leaving the home life is merely form and appearance, and is not truly leaving the home life. If Bodhisattvas have truly left home, then they depart from all appearances and mature sentient beings throughout the Triple Realm. These may be called those who have truly left home. After saying these words, 5,000 sentient beings developed the mind of Anadara Samyak Sambhadi and were completely liberated from their mental outflows. At that time, Anand addressed the Buddha, saying, Bhagavan, what should we name this sutra, and how should we bear it in mind? The Buddha said to Ananda, This sutra is called The Dharma Gateway of the Pronouncement Given to Badra the Magician. It is also called The Dharma Gateway of the Gradual Realization of Body. If there are sentient beings in a future era who wish to perceive the Tathagata, and do the work of the Buddha for sentient beings, then they should accept, maintain, study, recite, and extensively speak the Sutra for others. Why is this so? This person has perceived the Tathagata, and has also done the work of the Buddha. Therefore, Ananda, if someone accepts, maintains, studies, recites, and transmits this Sutra to others, then it is to pity, to benefit, and to gladden sentient beings. If one wishes to develop the destiny going to Supreme Body, then one should diligently cultivate according to the Sutra, since this Sutra is able to produce Supreme Body. This Sutra is able to give rise to Supreme Body, so the Sutra is therefore also called Yielding and Growing Body. If there are those who accept and maintain this Sutra, then you should know that the Buddhas abide with that person much less those who cultivate according to its principles. At that time, Badra again addressed the Buddha, saying, Big Avin, this sutra is also called Revealing Good Roots. For what reason? Since hearing the Buddha's teachings of this sutra, all good roots are now completely manifest before me. After the Buddha had spoken this sutra, then Venerable Ananda, Badra, and the entire assembly of devas, humans, Ajuras, Gandharvas, and so forth, heard what the Buddha had said. With great bliss, they believed, accepted, and practiced in accordance 